This footage comes to us from Holland. A group of friends are exploring a park and decide to visit some watchtowers from World War II. The towers are closed for vandalism and it looks like their trip is over. Little did they know they were about to see something much more interesting than a cluster of abandoned towers could ever be. What the fuck is that? Hey! Kerel, hey! A large black figure is observing their movements from somewhere in the distance. It looks like it is trying to hide behind a tree, which shows that it has some level of intelligence, but it does a poor job and gets spotted immediately. They began shouting for the humanoid to come out. Suddenly, a series of banging noises fills the forest and sends them running. When one of them enhances the camera footage, this is what they find glaring at them. Then again, I guess it's hard to glare at someone when you have no face. Whatever this humanoid was doing, it looked like it was up to trouble. The group might have been easily attacked if they didn't try to scare it off. Yet another Randonautica exploration turned scary. Posted to TikTok by Autumn Johnson. This two-part series will keep you on your toes. Autumn writes that the app first took them to a dirt road leading deep into the forest. At the destination, they searched around only to find the roof of a house sticking out of the ground. When they looked inside, they discovered it was a Native American spirit house. The Ojibwe housed the graves of those passed away in stone structures. Their houses are built to honor their families and offerings are made there. These traditional spirit houses are, more or less, simply grave sites. Some TikTokers remark that it's important to respect these sacred grounds, and that's for sure. TikToker Jack of All Trades writes, So long as you didn't touch anything, you should be okay. But if you did, I'm so sorry for you. We've all seen reflections in the window at night, but maybe none as creepy as what YouTuber Mystic Paranormal found in his car window. Mystic published this video in August 2017, writing that it was the scariest thing he ever captured on video. Let's be the judge of that. In the video, the YouTuber says he captured a hag on his phone's camera. He seems to want to capture some more footage, but cars keep driving by, which interrupts a proper view of the hag-like face. The woman in the video says she's scared to turn because the face has been appearing on her side of the vehicle. For a while, they're sitting in the darkness, hoping to capture the image on camera. While they wait, their camera runs out of battery. But the image they've already captured does appear like a masked hag reflected in the window. What is this, an apparition? Does this woman even exist? Whatever the reality of this is, a strange reflective phenomenon caught on camera, or an old lady spirit, the result is chilling. What is this being lurking in the forest? YouTuber Fish on Fish Out returned to his favorite fishing spot with the boys when he spotted this. What was that? I'm not sure what that is. Could it be pareidolia? Maybe. But I think it's a demon lurking. Angry that they took his favorite fishing hole. Sarah Presley of Meet the Presleys apparently has caught a ghost on camera who is trying a little too hard to better know her and her family. It's past midnight when her son Josh turns off the lights. A ghost orb appears in the middle of the video at 2 minutes and 8 seconds and then again briefly at 2 minutes and 13 seconds. When he crosses the room on his phone. The orb moves away from him. I think this light is from the screen of his phone. His mom, on the other hand, is creeped out beyond belief and pretty worried. Overall, I'm not sure if this video is paranormal or not and need your help to decide. On October 17th, 1989, nature struck its fear into the lives of loads of baseball fans. Game 3 was to start at 5.35 at the Candlestick Park Stadium. In San Francisco, the stadium was filled with thousands of baseball fans, but before they could sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game, at 5.04, 
the quake started to shake the earth, the first ever to be broadcast on live TV. At second base, so the Oakland A's take... Take... I'll tell you what, we're having an earth. According to Wikipedia, experts credit the timing of the series as a lucky break that prevented mass loss of life in the region. Key in reducing the loss of life was the fact that many people on both sides of the bay had left work early or were staying late to participate in after-work group viewings and parties, reducing the traffic that would otherwise have been on the collapsed freeways at 5.04 on a Tuesday. The ABC News crew was live on air at the event and their feed was temporarily knocked out when the quake struck. The audio was restored before the video and one of the anchors is heard saying the quake was the greatest opening in the history of television bar nine. The Goodyear blimp actually helped coordinate emergency assistance. And of course, Game 3 was postponed. The delay is the longest in the history of the World Series. When the game actually played out 10 days later, emergency responders were honored with throwing out the ceremonial first pitch. Pretty terrifying to watch. Lives were lost, but heroes came out of the woodwork, and that's a beautiful thing. Trevor Dealey didn't show up for work and his co-workers are worried. He never misses work no matter what. When he misses another day, they call the Dublin police. Detectives check cameras. Trevor is a redhead over six feet tall, hard to miss. The year is 2000, so they don't have many CCTV systems, but they have enough. This is what they find. His co-workers were with him at an office party at a bar called Copperface Jacks. They moved the party to a nightclub called Buck Whaley's and Trevor Dealey stays there until close. It's about 3.30 a.m. at this point and Trevor has already said goodbye to all of his co-workers. He will see them tomorrow. Trevor doesn't go home from there. He's in a good mood so despite the wind and rain, he goes back to his place of work, a bank that's open 24-7, to grab an umbrella and to talk to some co-workers. Outside of the bank is someone else who doesn't mind the bad weather, a man dressed in all black. They cross paths at 3.34 in the morning. This man has been here since 3.05, simply standing around a bank in the middle of the night for about half an hour. He waits 8 seconds and then follows Trevor to a side gate. There they talk for 10 seconds. The stranger is as tall as Trevor and looks stronger. Trevor unlocks the gate. The man waits for at least a minute as Trevor talks to some people inside. He doesn't mention the man dressed in black, so he must not have felt in any danger or else he would have no doubt asked for help. About half an hour later is when Trevor comes out with an umbrella. He unlocks the gate and heads home. The man dressed in black appears. Five minutes later, Trevor leaves his best friend a voicemail. Hi Glenn, I've missed you there. Just on my way home, all going good. I'll talk to you tomorrow. It was the last words anyone would hear from him. Trevor is on Haddington Road except something looks wrong. He's in quite a hurry. 22 seconds passed and someone speed walks behind him, a person wearing all black, and that's where the trail ends. None of the other surveillance cameras show Trevor again. He was definitely moving fast in the last video. He could have been running because the rain got worse, but I'm fairly sure he was being stalked. Police were able to verify that the man dressed in black behind him was the same person who was at the bank. Standing outside of a bank for a half hour at night is shady to begin with, but then waiting for a half hour for someone to come out and following them for another 15 minutes home is all the circumstantial evidence detectives needed to determine Trevor had his life taken. They were never able to learn who the man dressed in black was. The disappearance remains an unsolved mystery 20 years later. Later. Not even a 100,000 euro reward in recent years has been enough to make anyone step forward. With that said, the case was reopened in 2016. The video is uploaded by the National Police Force of Ireland and needs more attention. I would like to make the surveillance video go viral in hopes that someone has the answer. He probably lost his life, but we can't rule out being taken captive. Maybe we can help find him and give his remaining family closure. This video was recorded in Portugal sometime in 2001. 
It starts out with a group of friends just playing around with a home camera, which was pretty much considered a novelty back then. They are filming everything in the house for no reason at all for a long time until they get bored and decide to try and contact some spirits. To do this, they make one of their friends named Nelson stand in a circle and concentrate in silence. Maybe it's just the power of suggestion, but Nelson sways for a bit and then tumbles to the ground. They aren't sure what to make of this. At this point, neither am I. So they make Nelson do it again, as they are trying to summon a spirit through Nelson for a second time. Something unexpected happens. This time, another friend, Celestino, falls to the ground and begins convulsing. When he gets up, he is no longer the same person. If Celestino is acting here, he's doing an excellent job. Look at how his shoulder blades come jutting out of his back as he stands up aggressively. That definitely does not look normal. The rest of the video is them tracking Celestino as he behaves strangely outside. They don't know what to do, but at the same time, they don't want to lose sight of him. Eventually, they get split up, and when the one with the camera finds his friends again, none of them are in good shape. Merda, I really hope that this was just a fake video. It does almost seem like the Blair Witch Project at times, which was very popular in 2001. Then again, I wouldn't underestimate the power behind conjuring spirits. So I'll leave it up to you to decide. A paranormal YouTuber named CHZA Chad is in search of some real ghost sightings. So he goes exploring an abandoned hospital in Perrysburg, New York called the J.N. Adams Memorial Hospital. This old hospital is said to be haunted by patients from the early 1900s who on occasion will still show up for treatment in the hallway as a ghost. Chad soon separates from his team of fellow ghost hunters to explore the hospital on his own. The hospital is actually a collection of abandoned buildings and Chad is determined to investigate as many of them as he can to discover which places are the scariest and most haunted of all. In another room he finds and mistakenly handles a red container with a biohazard symbol. He doesn't look to see what's inside, but touching it at all probably wasn't a good idea. That's not his only concern. It's not long before he suspects there is a ghost in the hallway with him as well. Really? Whoa. I was about to say I'm walking down this creepy hallway, but there's a stairway right here. Whoa. What was that? Creepy noises coming from both ends of the hallway leave him unsure where to turn next. He wanders across a room with a single chair inside of a pentagram, like a ritual of some kind has been performed here, one that we're probably better off not knowing about. It's a weird enough discovery to make him rejoin his group, who by this point are as creeped out as he is. While exploring a different floor, they find this bird helplessly flying wall to wall, even though there is an open window for it to go through. Maybe that's why the bird is flying around like that. He probably knows something crazy happened right there. It could be protecting a nest, but something feels wrong in this room, and they take the bird's confusion as a sign of negative paranormal energy in the air. They chose to investigate this area with high-tech paranormal equipment designed to translate ghost voices into speech using special voice recognition software. First, it says the name Paul, followed by two more words. A Up here. Up here. Yo, is anything appearing on the screen right now? Where? Watch the screen. Any blobs again? Human. Pure human is what Paul the Ghost says. I wonder if it's actually trying to say not appear, but rather up here, as in above them, possibly referring to the space where the bird was trying to go. Next, they place a backpack on the ground and invite Paul the Ghost to interact with it. At 22 minutes and 40 seconds, their paranormal equipment registers ghost sightings all around the object, and at 22 minutes and 55 seconds, the ghost kicks its bare foot off the backpack and disappears. One of the ghost hunters named Herm stands in front of the camera to verify that it is working correctly. We're using electronics to see you. Whoa, that thing shot out of you. 
like he's inside you, I think. Their equipment has no problem detecting the ghost hunter as well, as a solid black paranormal orb that shoots out of the space where he's standing. It's like he's inside you, I think, says the ghost hunter named Kasha. Tell me if you agree that this could be a possession caught on tape. Not much else happens for another minute or so, and they feel the paranormal energy start to fade from this cursed room. They catch one last ghost sighting in the corner of the room by the door evidence that it's no longer interested in them in parting ways. But when Chad looks up, his camera refuses to go into focus, almost as if Paul the ghost is in the hallway, watching them for one last time. Here's a freaky sighting. Imagine you're playing guitar with your friends when something decides to pay a visit. Published by Navigon in November of 2007, this creepy video shows some dudes practicing in a bedroom. One is playing the guitar, the other is singing, and the third is recording the session. But as it turns out, there's a fourth uninvited guest nearby. As they continue to play, the friend filming the session takes a broader shot of the singer, and towering in the doorway behind him is a seemingly tall man standing sentry and staring into the room. In the comments of this video, David F. E. writes, It's a humanoid being about seven feet tall, not a ghost. Many people have reported them before. Whatever the case, in the moment, the friend filming doesn't spot the humanoid. The three continue their session without any reaction, and the next time the cameraman pans over, the figure is gone. They must have spotted the humanoid later in the playback, a humanoid that was so close he could have touched them. What would you do if you saw this over your friend's shoulder? If you suffer from arachnophobia, you definitely would want to keep your lights on for this one. What at first looks like your ordinary everyday bramble of twigs admits some rocks is not what it seems. With a stick, Connor Long, the video's creator, disturbs the nest, the many legs of which start to move. Published in July of 2011, Long came upon this Daddy Long Legs nest near Santa Barbara in Los Padres National Forest. Long notes that research into this clustering behavior came up short, as it isn't understood why they do this, whether it's for mating or moisture conservation during the hot summer months or some other reason. Whatever the basis for this behavior, one thing's for sure, don't step on this bramble, or you may just pass away of fear. Going to medical school presents many challenges, high tuition, debt, and the occasional wild animal encounter. If you were coming up the steps and saw a black panther animal barreling at you, you would almost certainly run. Big mistake. It's already in motion and your panic would trigger its instincts. You're not getting far. The panther starts to go into someone's room, but something makes it think twice about going in. It probably doesn't like being cornered with one exit and chooses not to go further inside. The college in Karnataka, India went into lockdown as a result of this scary CCTV video. Yeah, I guess that would do it. I should point out that this isn't all that uncommon in schools across India and I found some other creepy videos too. Here's a leopard at a college in Nainital. Thankfully, the only prey he finds is a car passing by. But imagine a college student looking at their feet walking along this fence. They'd never see it coming. I just hope everybody's alright. Captured at Hillview Manor in Newcastle, these paranormal explorers face their fears. Published by SCWC in October of 2019, the uploader calls this the scariest moment of their entire life. Although the video has no sound, the YouTuber says footsteps charged at them from down the hallway. The video shows their terrified reaction as they all look toward it. One of them even dives out of the way as the invisible spirit charges toward them. Noting that the footsteps ran between all of them, the uploader writes, The walls and floor shook with every footstep this spirit took while running. While you don't see anything run past, this group's synced reaction seems more than genuine. What was in the hill house with them? Who you gonna call? 
Likely this Russian YouTuber after watching this video. The YouTuber writes in Russian, When I started the project, I did not even imagine that it would get such results. Thousands of your posts about missed moments in Ghostbuster. The YouTuber explains that in past videos that he's posted, subscribers have found paranormal looking figures in the abandoned buildings he's explored. He ghost busts a couple of these myths, showing that looks can be deceiving. Looks to be a white figure beyond in the shadows of a darkened room. Dima explains that it was actually two pieces of white paper taped to the wall. However, he admits that other experiences do stump him. In one estate, something dark appears to be sliding slowly up a doorway in a room beyond. He concludes that it was either a bat rather than something paranormal, or that considering the estate is in the middle of Moscow, something else was on the premises and stuck their hand around the corner to see if he'd notice. Lastly, while exploring an estate, a ghost is seemingly captured peering from under the archway of a room. At this point during his exploration, Dima admits that a chill ran through his entire body. This one appears to stump Dima's and he asks his viewers if they want him to return to this place and try and recreate the scene and its circumstances to figure out once and for all what happened here. Do you want to know? Or do you think the undead are best left undisturbed? A YouTuber named Roy Flores has a strange encounter over the skies of New Jersey when he sees a mysterious aircraft hovering near the overpass he's driving on. Look, the whole street is stopped. There's a flying spaceship. And he's not the only one who sees it. Dozens of other cars have pulled over and people are getting out to take video of this strange phenomenon with their cameras, each wondering if this is the moment we finally made contact. A Goodyear blimp is the official explanation for this scary event, but I have serious doubts. I mean, you'd think all these people would know the difference between a blimp, which we've all seen, and something truly bizarre instead. A lot of people are saying this is a cover story for the strange sighting in the sky. Well, I think this design looks way too creepy to be some kind of company blimp. A YouTuber named Suspect Sky and his wife are convinced that something is waiting for them. Inside of their small closet, Suspect Sky slowly walks up to the closet and flings the door open. Prepared for conflict, only to find nothing inside, they are relieved for just a moment and then decide to get out of the house anyway. Something is still in there waiting for them. They think they can feel its presence and just want to leave as fast as they can. And when they looked at the video again later, they found out they were absolutely correct. A man from Sri Lanka incites panic in the sky when he announces that he is going to take himself out along with everyone else on the plane. The pilot makes an emergency landing in Melbourne, Australia, where a special police unit boards the flight. It looks like they are going to grab this man's ankles to forcibly remove him, but they reach past him to retrieve a mysterious black bag left behind by the person responsible, who has already been taken into custody. The man was threatening everyone with a device, which later turns out to be nothing more than a large Bluetooth speaker. The man was eventually taken to a mental health facility. It's worth mentioning that this was the same Malaysia airline that had a plane go missing over the Ukraine years ago, so they really were not taking any chances this time. Muna Bruzan bought this strange and creepy doll at an antique sale after she felt its eyes watching her. Now the doll apparently continues to do so as their connection grows stronger over time. Here you can see her pick up the doll to admire her. When the doll apparently comes to life, huh? you can hear Muna cry out in surprise as the doll turns towards her and flutters its eyes. I have no idea how this could have happened since both of her hands are nowhere near the doll's head when it turns to face her. When she puts the doll back down, it seems to understand that she is done playing and thoughtfully turns its gaze outside the window. A YouTuber named El Indocente is making a tutorial about how to repair a corroded window in his home. First, he puts special tape over it and hits it with some kind of industrial cleaning agent. Next, he removes the tape and applies more cleaner to get it sparkling like new. But here's a step he never expected to see. The ghostly image of his father unexplainably looking back at him. 
El Indocente swears that this is real and has no idea how his father's likeness is imprinted on the glass. I suspect that there is a way to transfer photographs onto glass that I'm not aware of. Let me know if this is some kind of special technique he's using, or if that's really a ghost in the window like he says. Kalen Speaks published this video in 2013. In the description, he writes, So I wanted to drop a skit, but something paranormal happened in my house last week, and I'm not talking about a little shadow. In the morning, when my family was either out or sleeping, a garbage bin in one of the rooms of my house got thrown out at my dog, and we caught it on camera. This is completely real. Kaylin says this isn't a prank. So let's take a look at what happened. She'd have to be behind it and hit her with her nose or her, her paws if she, she could somehow. But she's not. She's right beside it. And look, she's running. She's hauling out of the office. She's scared. Something... Kaylin shows the security footage of the downstairs hallway. He says no one was on this first floor at the time. In the clip, the dog runs in, sliding under a hallway table, while a small garbage bin with garbage in it slides in alongside her. Then the dog darts into another room. Kaylin thought initially that the dog had just been greedily eating from the trash and then suddenly got spooked by something and darted off, knocking the trash bin over and taking it with her for a short distance. Then he explains why he thought differently after reanalyzing the video. He says in order for the bin to be launched that far with such force, the dog would have had to hit it, and in order to hit it, she would have to be behind it. But she was running beside it at the beginning of the clip. The bin is also rolling for an inordinate amount of time. After hitting the wall for one or two minutes, according to Kaylin, while the dog watches it in fright from the hallway, at some points the roll of the bin slows and then it speeds up again. Is there a poltergeist controlling the trash bin? We can only guess. Thank you so much for getting me to 40,000 subscribers here on my Clips channel. If you want to support, please press that subscribe button. Can you help me reach 50,000 subscribers? Thank you.